here with Eric Canseal on the Oklahoma track. Eric, we got to ask you, why'd you become a jockey? Well, to start off, my parents, both of them, they were jockeys. So, I mean, that's how I got into it. When you think about, you know, did they want you to become a jockey? Were they against it? Some people or parents are for what they did. Some don't want their kids to do the execs, follow in the footsteps. It's not necessarily a safe occupation. So what did that look like? Nah, for me, it was it was pretty easy. You know, both of them, they always supported me from, from the beginning. You know, um, my mom and my dad, like I said, they, they were both jockeys. And they knew that I was going to like it because since I was a little kid, I was always around horses. And, I mean, they... From day one, they started showing me how to ride horses by myself and everything. So it was it was just wonderful. Walk me through the process of when you first started. You got up on your first thoroughbred for the first race. Where was it, and uh, how'd you end up here? Uh, my first race as a jockey was in Puerto Rico. Um, it was January first, uh, and it was it was a spe very special moment. You know, um, I was able to win my first race. Um, it was by DQ, but I still won the race, and I was just very happy, you know, um, and I was grateful. Um, then after that, uh, I rode in Puerto Rico for like two more weeks after I won my first race, and then came to the States, went to Florida uh, with Angel Cordero, and I spent around maybe two to three months without riding, just learning, you know, the system of the States, you know, and when he saw me a little bit more prepared to, to start riding over here, then he, he gave me the push. Talk to me about Angel Cordero. It seems like he uh, he's the king of the, the bugs. He brings them up and gets them to become superstar jockeys. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, look, he's he's a wonderful, wonderful person to be around. I mean, he's he was a great jockey. He's a, a great teacher, you know, and, and, and he's more of like a, a father figure to all those people people that come to him you know I mean he teaches us everything we could learn you know and, and and we're really grateful about it talk to me about when you talk about learning tell me what you do to prepare for races it seems like you have a number of opportunities this year at Saratoga where you've gotten some prices home um, and it's when or, or you're right there in second on, on a bigger price what do you do to prepare for the races is it film is it the program is it what do you do to get there well, I do a little bit of both, you know, I mean, sometimes I watch the program, sometimes I watch the races, you know, um, the the thing that I do the most is just like ride with confidence, you know, I, I leave everything up to the horse, you know, try to get them comfortable where where they're in a happy mode, you know, and and I just try to take everything I can out of them from the quarter pole to the wire, you know, I mean, not every horse likes to be ridden the same way, so you just got to play a 50 50 you know where he's comfortable and you're comfortable with it last question for you best win of all time you know what was the horse that you were like this is it i'm professional jockey i'm top tier what was that horse for you man uh, it's pretty it's pretty hard you know i haven't been able to to be on a on a great great horse you know uh, i've been on on many yet. horses. Yeah, you haven't been that, on one yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been on, on many horses that have turned out to be great in the future, you know, with with other people. But, uh, man, I've, I've had success with, with so many people, you know, with with, with George Weaver, with, with Chad, with, with Gary Siaka, you know. I've, I've had the opportunity to ride horses. I can't really pick just one person, you know. I make what every, about just horse? E every race special, you know, and one of my favorite horses to ride, you know, was Celtic Chaos, you know, it was a horse that he was very tough to ride because he didn't like to be pushed around at, that early in the race, you know, he stayed 10, 15 lengths behind and he just came running the last quarter of a mile and most of the time he, he got it done, so I was, he's one of my, my best horses, I could say. Well, there you have it, Eric can't see on why he became a jockey. Here at Danny Gargan's barn, you got Dakota Gold going today in the New York Stallion Series. Um, horse cutting back from one one in the one sixteenth back to a mile. How's horse been training after the last race? Well, he's been training really great. You know, he's he's a good doer. He trains well all the time and real good eater and everything. So we're just uh, 
hoping to get a clean trip and uh, get the money today. What did you think of that last race? I mean, he ran, he ran really well. You know, it was his uh, lifetime best buyer. I think we kind of, the horse got away from him when he shot up the rail and he just left him a little too much to do. But uh, today we're going to be a little more aggressive, probably sit third or fourth and uh, turn for home. He'll be running today. Last question for you. A little bit of rain predicted in the forecast. Are, are we hoping for rain or no rain here? No, we don't want no rain. A little firm turf will suit the horse better? He likes firm turf. Yeah. So he ran last time he ran, it rained. Mm -hmm. And he ran, he handled it well. So I'm not, you know, we don't, I want it to stay on the grass. So I don't think, you know, I don't think we're going to get that much rain. Hopefully, you know, keep your fingers crossed and uh, just hope we stay on the grass and get a big performance today. Danny Gargan with Dakota Gold in the New York Stallion Stakes. New York Stallion Stakes today, the heavy favorite. Good luck. Thank you. David Donk back at the far corner of the Saratoga main track. David, you have a New York Stakes horse going today, Barrel of Quest. Comes back to a mile here from a mile and the 16th. Uh, much better day in terms of temperature wise. Last time the horse raced, I believe it was 98 degrees or 97 degrees. So better opportunity here. How's the horse been training? It's done well. I, I think the biggest difference for him is two turns, whether it's a mile, mile and the 16th is kind of a moot point. So uh, the race at Belmont was seven eighths, maybe didn't suit him as well. You know, he ran well when he broke his maiden two turns at Aqueduct. So uh, listen, it's a good spot for him to get a piece of it. Obviously, he's going to have to be Dago, you know, Dakota, Dakota Gold. But um, yeah, um, he's done well. It's not. It's probably an easier spot than the A of the van that we had last week. So that's why we, why we chose to run here. The outside posts have actually been heating up quite a bit on the inner turf course. Were you happy that you got that draw on the way on the outside, being an opportunity well, not no traffic? You know, I mean, on the inner is playing saving ground has been pretty important lately the way the rail setting i'll be honest i'm not sure if the rail setting is the same today as last week so i need to go back and look at that but he's very tactical uh there's some speed in the race but again we'll just we'll let jose do his thing and um i was pretty pleased with his race last time dylan rode him uh he was supposed to ride him but he's on suspension this week so um you know it was a really solid race with a good number last time listen if he can move forward a little bit uh it puts him in the thick of it. Well, even with switching jockeys, you're still getting one of the best in the world right now. So good luck with the stakes today. I appreciate it. Thanks.